welcome back to Holistic Creative Chats. I am super excited to have with have with me today Lisa Wilson, and we have been giggling already. So um, this it feels really great to have you here, Lisa. Thank you for agreeing to this chat. On uh, it's taken us two months, two months to actually make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for holding this space to me, too. It's like, you know, life is going on and, and just, mm. yeah, this is this is so needed, not only for us, but for, you know, hopefully everybody who's going to be listening in. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so if you don't know Lisa, Lisa is um, the founder, owner, writer at beingbreath.com. And um, I was just reflecting to her that she was one of the very first blogs that when I kind of came into the online scene, um, that I just totally resonated with and would read. I, I just, I had her like in my little bookmarky tabs back then and just read the posts as they came out and they just filled me up and helped me refine my own creative center at that time, which is where I was at. So, um, and since then we've had the honor of working together in multiple ways and becoming friends and it's just, it's beautiful. So, and I love the work you bring into the world. And what you just said about about us it taking us two months and you know, life happens, you know. And to me, like <laughs> I feel like that points so beautifully to one of your greatest gifts, Lisa. And one of the things that you offer so naturally through what you write and and I really see it as a calling to service, the way that you show up online to inspire people. Um, is that you have this way of translating the creative process or the process of awareness work and recognizing how that comes into the day-to-day, -day, into life itself. And you have a really beautiful way of articulating that. And for me, awareness work and creative process work could go hand in hand. And they're just like, they're like in the healing process. So like I see those connections very easily. And awareness is very much what you're passionate about. So... Um, so yeah, I just want to honor that gift that you have and that you bring and and I'm wondering just to start <laughs> just to start out if you could um, Describe a little bit about how you are seeing your creative process right now. What is that looking like for you? Mm. Ah, just a deep breath first that was mm. that's beautiful and oh my god, I'm gonna cry already oh. Oh <laughs> This is I love that you asked that. And I love that you bring that up. And that interjection was just absolutely touching mm. because that's one of the things that one of the places that I'm at right now is really asking myself, not necessarily um, what I am doing to create, but what my world work is. Mm. Um, I've often used the term business and let it go. And I have my business and uh, just it, there's something about it that feels constricting. For me, my world work is whatever I am doing beyond my own, beyond my own self, for my own self purpose, yeah. and the creative process goes along with both of those. And as you know, and some people know, because I've you know I've blogged about it, my life has recently gone groundless again, and that's it's a terrifying and beautiful place to be in. And when I say that, you know, people go groundless for different reasons. It's whenever life tends to like upset things. You know, the way that you thought things were, an expectation isn't met, or somebody passes, or even there's a birth, there's a joyous upset, but there's this groundlessness that we enter into. And you did a um, a chat with Miss, Miss Shams Charlie a bit ago, mm -hmm. and she had talked about, I think it was like deconstruction or something, but she had given this image of, of being, you know, this wax figure that was like melted down. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in this pool right now, this puddle. And when my creative process enters into rebuilding that, re-solidifying it, and then remelting it, there's something that I have learned over the number of times that I've been melted and shaped and melted and shaped mm. and melted and shaped <laughs> is that it's not about the shape that emerges for me. So it's not about if I end up blogging more or creating another class or making a painting or just withdrawing from online things and, you know, playing with my two kids or something. It's not about the shape that it takes. It's about the entire process of the melting and the creating and the melting and the creating. I have a, a tendency, and I know this about myself, and it's amazing that I've stayed married because I'm horrible about committing to things. I just, I cannot <laughs> stay committed to the life of me. I start in a project, and I'm like, oh, this is great, it's fun, and then, oh, uh, I'm done. You know, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. that goes that goes with anything and everything. Mm -hmm. 
And that is something that I've had to struggle with as I've defined my creative self, my world work, because there is a tendency for most of us to have a definition or at least five definitions, mm -hmm. to have an elevator speech that says what we do, who we are. When somebody asks, what do you do? You know, having something to offer. And even if we don't have a lot of interactions like that, having something in here to define who we are, mm -hmm. what, you know, what life means to us, what is our purpose, our goal, our word of the year, or whatever it might be, have some guiding force. And with that, difficulty that I have to commitment. Committing to a word, a label, a way of being mm -hmm. is extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. So when I think about what am I doing next, when I enter this groundless space and what I'm shaping, I have to focus on the process of the shaping, not the form. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I'm going back to being a painter. I'm not going back to being a blogger. I'm not going back to any of this. I am just waking up in the morning and I am doing what is in front of me. And sometimes that means the laundry that's piled up. And sometimes it means finishing a canvas that I've had sitting staring at me forever because it needs to be addressed. Yeah. And it changes moment by moment. And the more that I grasp to, I've got to finish this painting. I've got to get a blog done. I've got to get this laundry done. The more I find myself disheveled and completely thrown off when life does change because it's always changing it's always changing whether it's you know what happened recently with a you know a death or whether it's you know just the kids coming home and saying oh my gosh i have a big project tomorrow we have to go to the store and get this thing it's always changing there is yeah. so much gold in what you just said oh my um, goodness oh <laughs> I'm, I'm buzzing with it so so a few things that jumped in for me from that um you're you're so spot on as far as I can tell from my experience too. Um, <laughs> is is I love how you said it's like you're not clinging to the labels. I completely relate to that. I completely relate to not being able to commit and because like and then once you for me it's like the minute I say oh yeah this is what I am I can guarantee yeah. you within a few days I'm gonna wake up and be like oh I don't know <laughs> like you know like that's not all of me like that doesn't cover it you know like there's more going on <laughs> so. But I, <laughs> I love how you, you took that. And so, so it's not like you're saying, I'm a painter. You know, you're not going back to saying that, for instance. Um, you know, I am a painter. And how different it becomes when we take out that idea of a label as, as a subject. Like, as, a, as, we, as if we are an object itself. And, and instead, we take the verb, right? I am painting. So today I wake up, I'm not a painter, but today I am painting. And this is, this is what I'm, this is how I'm being. This is what I'm doing. This is how I be, you know, that kind of thing. So that totally can shift how we experience what is happening in our life in that level of awareness. Because like in this metaphor, this beautiful metaphor you're using of coming into a shape or, or form, you know, in order to really, I feel, to really truly feel like the, expansion of our essence that container that form itself has to remain malleable to some degree it has to remain flexible or permeable even and able to shift and shape with each moment you know with each hour with each day that you wake up yes. Yes. and uh, and in that is i think the liberation of the creative spirit really i felt that oh. when you talked about that just that Oh, it's kind of like feeling like, you know, you're trying to contain like this breeze in a jar, you know, mm -hmm. like you're standing in front of a fan and trying to just go, no, okay, I'm going to do this. And then when you, you talked about the liberation of the creative spirit, you know, it's just like opening the hands and just feeling it. Yeah. And it's like, that's, you know, that's the flow. That's, you know, that's what being breath came to me for. That is mm -hmm. the breath. That is the breathing. And it's not, it's not easy. It's, you know, it can feel it right now. We can talk about this and, you know, get, get very, you know, oh, it's beautiful. But it's not, it's not easy. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> there's, you know this. <laughs> we were just talking about this before we hit record. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded all this stuff before. No. <laughs> it's true. Like, life. That's, that's kind of an ironic thing is that life is so much easier when you feel that you have an idea of where you're going. When you feel like you are a shape, 
you know, life is easy. That's what we're taught. We go through life and it, most of us, at least in, you know, the, the culture that I was raised in, you know, you have elementary school and middle school and high school, and then you go to college and then you get a job and you may get partnered or married, you know, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. But there's always, there's a path. And it's reinforced when we get into jobs, whether it's traditional job or even more so the entrepreneurial path, there's a path that you take and there's steps that you go through to do these things. And so we so often try and, okay, find what's the next step. What's the next step? You know, what, mm -hmm. what do I need to do to fulfill this one goal? And then when we've met a goal, it's like, oh, what's next, you know, mm -hmm. And it's so much easier to do that, as stressful as it feels, because it's not, it's not, it's not present. It's defined. Mm -hmm. That's, and I, yeah, I'll let you talk. And, 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 yeah. and don't you feel like, too, like in that moment, like when you, okay, so you set a goal, whether it's a small one or a big one, and you get there. Like, yes. and, and it's just like when the things happen in life that are difficult, that, that sideswipe you, the curveballs of life that are, they knock you groundless. And I really find that often the same thing happens when we reach a goal, all of a sudden it's, it's, we've been working so hard for it and it's been all of that activation and then we're there, but then all of a sudden it can feel very, very groundless again. Yes. And yeah, and that I think that that is just like it's wild because we think we've reached the goal. It's like it's that whole you know we think we're getting somewhere we're in, and then it's we're there and voila everything's <laughs> blah. I don't know what we think, but <laughs> but when we get there, we find it's just as groundless as those moments when we don't know because once again we don't know. We've been focusing so much on that form, that container, and now all of a sudden that's that shape is complete, yeah. and so we have to melt back again in order to come back up again and see what that next manifestation or ramification or all of that's going to be. Ah. <laughs> yes. yes. And I love that you brought the positive into that too, because it isn't just about those negative things that knock you off. You know, you lose the job or, you know, get depressed, you, whatever it is. It's not just about those. The good things can knock you off too, because we have so many ideas of what life should look like you know, shoulds. I always go back to the, the shoulds, our boxes of shoulds, you know. That's, there's so many ideas, whether it's the way the traffic should flow when we're driving somewhere. Mm -hmm. It gets really frustrating if it's not flowing that way. Or, you know, the way a painting should look when it's done, you know, that there should be some sort of um, artistic integrity that we withhold within the painting or an art journal, the way it should look. Or the way a job mm. should look, you know? I know my yeah. husband gets stressed over that a lot, you know, how, yeah. how the household should look because that's what he's been taught. And there's all these concepts and ideas. And even when we have these good things, it rattles those expectations just a little bit. You know, like, oh, wait a minute, you know, I, I've completed this now, but wait, wait, I was supposed to, this was going to lead to this next great thing that, you know, Oprah was then going to be calling after I completed this one and, you know, we were going to have this interview. <laughs> whatever it might be <laughs> this constant like releasing and that's yeah yeah that's what I have to constantly explore and that's what you know I keep going back out with this world work because it's not enough just for me to do it I've tried that before I've tried to just be like all right I'm I'm done for a little bit you know I'm done with blogging and everything and I can't I can't because it's not just about me there is so much that I see in the world, so much suffering that I see in the world, um, and not on the grand scale. And I might be taking things way off here. So if I derail totally, feel free to like, you know, shift back and be like, yeah, take right. it, baby. Let's, let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love you. Um, it's not, you know, this grand scale suffering, that, though that's happening. Yeah. What fascinates me more is when you bring it down even smaller and smaller and smaller and everybody goes right in here. The yeah. stuff that we mm -hmm. don't talk about that's going on day to day. And we talked about this a little bit before, mm -hmm. you know, before we started our chat about these thoughts, these things that we have that we struggle with, not even in a 24 hour period, but in a two second period mm -hmm. where our thoughts can take us and it's good, it's bad, it's up, it's down, it's boxed in. And we don't have the space to explore that. And we don't have the time or space to explore. We don't give ourselves the time or space to explore that. Yeah. And for me, that's what 
this mindfully aware and creatively engaged life is, is that there is nothing but that exploration. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. It takes form in different ways. You know, when I I'm exploring what it means to be a mom, you know, it may be just being (laughs) being comfortable driving in my minivan that day and not worrying (laughs) about what other people are thinking because I love my minivan. That's right. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it may just be something like that. But it's there's so much richness. There's so much vitality in life in just that, this moment to moment to moment of creative breath. And it comes with stillness. It comes with movement. And when we try and contain it into a should, into one path, into one way of being, we die. And it's not just physical that, you know, we all just, we, we crumble and we turn into the, and turn into a lot of what we see around us, this suffering and we don't know why. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. And, and our, our, you know, and our culture is so, I mean, it's busy, 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 go, 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 non-stop overstimulation. Yes. And so yes. what you're talking about here to even begin to like say, okay, wait to step outside of that thought without that identifying with that thought, you have to slow yeah. down. Like you're saying, you just, you have to consciously choose the breath. <sighs> Yes. And that's and, and it sounds so simple, you know, and it can sound so yeah. trite to some people. And I know that. But that's the thing. It's really all it takes. This breath right here, this moment. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just thought that horribly judgmental thought about the person in the car sitting next to me. That's Thank not you. me. Yes. Huh. <laughs> Isn't that curious? Don't okay. Bless, <laughs> bless, bless, you know. <laughs> I just, you know, I did have that horribly judgmental thought and okay, I'm sticking with it right now. Thank you very much. You know, that's right. <laughs> because that's, I love you brought it up because it's so easy to then <laughs> add on the layers of judgment. And I've been there and done that, especially those who enter a spiritual practice, a self-awareness yes. practice, whatever it may be. We start looking at ourselves and like, oh, that's not who I thought I was. You know, I don't say words like that or I don't think thoughts like that. <laughs> you know, like, oh. So then, you know, we're piling all this additional judgment on ourselves and life just becomes miserable. Yeah, it's so, a spiritual trap because it becomes a goal yes. again. It's another goal, another container, another form. And, and that's not the point of it. That's not the point of being exactly. on a spiritual path. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, it's like sometimes, okay, yeah, yeah. I did think, I I don't know if I, I'm not going to cuss on here because I, I, I oh, have please. a very bad potty mouth. I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah. I hope my kids don't survive me. But I don't edit. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, I, all of these these things, and that, you know, even came up in my mind right there, too. Like, oh, my gosh, what's somebody going to think if I, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I've got my beautiful mother, but, you know, this is who we are. We are all so multifaceted. You know, that's, um, what's that quote by it's, uh, Walt Whitman that, is one of my favorites that, you know, did I, do I contradict myself very well then? You know, I am, yes. I, I am, what is it? Something I contain multitudes. I and love that's one that. of my oh. favorite ones. I'm like, I, that, that, you know, going back to the labels and going back to the creative, the creative self is that, you know, it's so easy to get trapped into thinking that we are or you are or they are something yeah instead of just being with the moment and looking at somebody and saying this is what it is you talked about it being a verb you know yeah this is this is a living interaction the human being yes we're here being human for a reason (laughs) and that means to experience being human and that's i mean yeah yeah the whole the whole gamut of it and yes. and yes. to explore what it means to not force the container or the form or the attachment upon what that means. Ah, oh. um, oh, so good. Okay, so so here's the question I ask everybody: How do you define healing today, Lisa? Mm. And you love. I just I have to throw in one of the favorite one of my favorite things that you just asked is how do you define healing today? Today. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Because mm-hmm. by the time that this, you know, airs, I don't know, I might define it differently. But. <laughs> it goes back to that label thing and how, like, you know, the next morning I wake up and I'm like, oh, screw that. <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute. That wasn't what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, healing for me, 
again, is, is a verb. There, I don't think that anyone is ever healed. And healing for me is just about, um, is about wholeness. Um, I, and I'd like to offer just kind of like a, an image for it, um, in the way that I think of awareness, because I think of awareness and healing as kind of the same, like you had mentioned earlier, you can be walking down the street and see the street in front of you to make sure that you're not stepping in any, you know, potholes or anything like that, or, you know, sidewalk cracks or whatever. And that's one form of awareness. You can see the trees around you and the clouds above you. And that's another form of awareness. You can have in your head the conversation that you had earlier today. And that's another form of awareness that you're holding on. You can simultaneously be aware that somebody else right in that moment is not walking down the street. They're across the world and maybe hungry or maybe having sex or maybe doing something, the most mundane thing you can think of. That's another form of awareness. And for me, the more layers of awareness, the more broad my awareness is, the closer that I get to, I hesitate to use the word, but enlightenment. Oh, that just sounds horrible Mm -hmm, mm because I'm not going for that. But the more that I get to a sensible, peaceful way of being. And for me, that's healing. For me, that's healing. To be able to look at all the parts of myself, all the thoughts that I'm having, to hear all the thoughts that everyone else are ha- that everyone else is having, joyous and suffering and all of that, to see nature and everything in the buildings and the cup in front of me, and to be with that in that moment, that's healing. Mm. That's healing. Oh, I love that. Thank mm. you, Lisa, for Thank being you. here. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much, Haley. <laughs>